Look, I won't beat you over the head with a coffee mug and a tote bag for a week. I just need your support. Make a pledge and donate today at charliehodgeshow.com and help keep the Hodgecast afloat. You got that right? And now, the Hodgecast. Starring the man who's starting to understand the importance of elastic waistbands, Mr. Charlie Hodge, Matt the Chicken Wings Adler, and our special guest today, K Quist with a twist. Yay! So that's going to stick? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, we're not losing that one. K Quist. K Twist. <laughs> Damn it. K Quist with a twist is back in the studio, or Kirsten Winquist. Been saddled with chicken wing for two years, you know. Yeah. yeah. But you told it me you loved than it. That. <laughs> Anything's better than that. <laughs> the wing. <laughs> now, can people actually hear you on the Jimmy Buffett channel? They can. Yeah. Your voice will cascade through your ear holes. <laughs> Cascading through mm-hmm. many ear holes across America, and they all think I'm sitting on a beach with my toes in the <laughs> sand, and I'm actually yeah. in my house in a cave. Yeah. Knee deep in a bag of bugles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> in my PJs with a Jack Russell Terrier sitting on my lap. <laughs> no sand, just mm, bugle, bugle I love crumbles. This but you still do the sound effects in the back. Go, go. <laughs> Coconuts. Hey, give me another margarita. Raise your hands, sexy lady. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds of the Caribbean. Please give me money. Do they have money in the Caribbean? No, they're all poor. <laughs> well, they have currency. I mean, they have a currency. They don't have any of it. Yeah. But if they were if they were asked to pick it out of a lineup, they'd be like, that's the money. That's the one they use here. When I go there, I have it. I have their currency, and they try to get it from me, but I'm like, no, I don't want my hair braided. Oh. You would look good with cornrows. You think so? Puka shell necklace. Uh. Come on. Come on. The That is that is the telltale sign of a douche. You could travel <laughs> to another planet, and you could if there was an alien wearing a puka shell anything, you're like, well, there's the douche of the planet. <laughs> there's the planet douche. Oh. Do you have a puka shell necklace? Sorry. No, but here's a weird story. I actually bought one for Kirsten. Oh, uh, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. You have you it here today? I Is went it? on a week-long vacation to Mexico. I came back, and I bought. I got drunk, and I was like, I'm buying gifts for all my friends. And I came back, and I was so embarrassed. I was like, I don't know if I can give this to her. Did you? Yeah, I gave you a puka shell necklace. She obviously left it at the workplace. I'm sure she did. The, I wouldn't the blame her. The janitor took it I home. I would not blame her for a second, because I think I spent $5 on it. Oh but God. I was drunk and trying to buy gifts for everybody. I was like, I don't want to come back empty-handed. I vaguely remember that. Yeah. It's probably at my desk. Was it a puka KLBJ? shell with probably. like googly eyes on it? No, no, no. Like dressed g- up. No. Like, I'm Senor Puka. I'm not a. You know, I didn't want to look like a tourist. I didn't buy that one. I bought the cool puka shell necklace <laughs> for her. I'll wear it next podcast. Okay. The puka choker. Yes, indeed. Oh, sexy. <laughs> oh, puka man. choker. <laughs> the puka choker. I was now, drunk. since last you sat here in the studio. You've left KLBJ, and you're full-time with Sirius. Yes. Yeah, I'm full-time with uh, Sirius XM Radio Margaritaville. So Radio Margaritaville. Jimmy Buffett's channel. Well, now, I kind of was social media ended up that you were coming on, and I accumulated a list of questions from <laughs> listeners and fans that, really? that have questions about your well-being and what's going on. Aw. Yeah. Do you mind if we open up the old mailbag? No, I don't mind, but... Expose you to the mailbag? Matt's face is concerning me. I don't mind, but this makes me think something's something's up. No, no, no. What? Matt's jaded, grizzled, crystallized soul is pouring (laughs) forth so much that it's making you skeptical? (laughs) Yes. Nothing. Nothing at all. He's probably looking at progressive commercials on his computer. He loves that flow. He's over there getting all coy, smiling like, "Mm, flow. And now there's the flow bot. You really like flow? She, he thinks she's think hot. Flow annoys me. Flow is the Flo nickname for your people. period when you're a little girl. I know. That's what it I makes know. me think of. I Aunt know. Flo. I know. But it's so much better than the, <laughs> Sorry. Than the guy. No, I just love it because you weren't kidding. You're like, that. I find her sexually attractive. I, I think she's funny. And funny always does it for me. And sexually attractive and funny are the same? Well, they, for me they are, yes. Is All there right. a category of funny porn? Yeah. Really? No, I don't. It's know. called funny bone. <laughs> <laughs> so you it's porn. All right. Um, some of the questions that came in via social media here. Let me pull up the screen. In all your years at 
the radio station, did anyone in management ever make a pass at you? No. No. No, not no. No? No. That's what people want to know. I, I, I had, actually, yes, yeah, a couple of people. What? You Really? Well, from the sales team. Who, Steve? I don't want to say names. <laughs> they made a pass at you, man? Yeah, you know, it happens. Like a legitimate pass? Huh? Well, uh, yeah, legitimate. In, in, back in Florida, yeah. But not here. Well, yeah. I Get mean, off the yeah. plane in Florida. Austin, yeah. <laughs> not in Austin, but in Florida, definitely. Now, how did that manifest? The Florida pass, as I like to call it. How did that manifest? Yeah. Uh, our, sh- it, our state's it, shaped like a dick. You want to <laughs> do it? Let's go in the van. Hey, you live in a dick shape. Well, in the the capital of Tallahassee, looks like a cock and balls. <laughs> I mean, you, really? yeah, you drive down Appalachian Parkway, and it is that you know the the dick, and then the two balls on the side. Mm-hmm. It was designed to look that way. It was designed to be intimidating. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, seriously. Google and, it. And the enemy could not could not run through the pube pavilion. <laughs> yes. like, it's impossible to run through. It's thick. We're going to charge the urethra. <laughs> Take the city. <laughs> so who? how did that happen in Florida? Were you uh, out drinking at a, a, a radio station show? Uh, my boss just asked to see my boobs every Whoa! day. Whoa! Every Whoa! day. Every day? Really? Oh, yeah. And then even when I moved here, he would Facebook me and be like, you're going to show me the twins now that wow. you don't work for me anymore? Wow. And I'd be like, no. That is so... That's balls. Yeah. Just, that's... Uh, that's one of those things. So I, we opened up the mailbag here, and I was not expecting to feel lowly as a species. God, <laughs> I mean, I like boobs. I do. I'm a dude. But where do you get off being a dude? I mean, how do you, how, are you, how are you so obtuse to the overall feelings of someone else? I mean, because you'd be like, "Yeah, you want to see my boobs? Show them to you. Ask me every day." But it's like, really? No, think about it. Really? <laughs> I, now, I agree with what you're saying. I agree with the general sentiment that going to a woman, specifically one you work with or are friends with, and saying that is wildly inappropriate. However, you and I had no problem going on the air going, hey, if anybody wants to text us some pictures of their boobs, we'll I'm talking about it. other people, not okay. what I do. Okay. <laughs> and I lost you when you said general cinema. Sentiment. Oh. Okay. It's dire straits. Well, yeah, it is. Okay. Well, when people used to email their boobs in, it was for art. And, and, and prizes. Art. And prizes, mostly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but asking an employee to show you their boobs. You seem like you should be a millionaire. All you had to oh. do is like call an ethics line. Right. But then you'd be. That's the problem. Cool girls are like, I'm no, I'm no, I'm no snitch. I'm well, no rat. Okay. Here's the thing. No, I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty laid back. You guys yeah, work you with are. me. Yeah, yeah, no, very. I definitely got so many fired in Tallahassee for sexual harassment. Really? Oh yeah. Was it that guy? Uh, no, it was a different guy who actually like grabbed my butt. Whoa! Like no, yeah, it was. And he would make comments, like really, really inappropriate comments, and huh. cross that line. And I was, I was, you know, I was really young, and I got, I got all upset when he grabbed my ass one day oh, in the hallway. Well, and sure. I, I just ran into the GM, and I started crying. And he was like, "All right, well now this is an HR issue." And I was like, "Oh well, I did, I didn't know that." He's like, "Nope, I've got to take this to HR." Did he shame you? Too late. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. He was like, "This is an mm. HR issue now. I'm required you to take it anything, the line." Be fine. Yeah. You're like a real life Billy Jean. <laughs> you are. Fair's fair. That. Fair's fair. <laughs> Fair's fair. I don't like being in this situation, but it's fair. Should be grabbing my butt. <laughs> I wouldn't feel bad about that at all. No, God that's no. Totally, that's total justice right there. Uh, no, if you if you exist in a workplace where you still behave that way, no, it's no one's fault but your own. Mm-hmm. It, it, when when you finally get canned. Yeah. Yeah. It was so inappropriate. Oh, it's totally inappropriate. So yeah. he wasn't like uh, he wasn't like some guy in like a chair that had a robotic hand, was he? Because I'm going to start feeling bad for him if he was like, robot hand malfunctioned. You're like, mm, fucking robo dick <laughs> over here, grab my butt. No, definitely not. Okay. His hands were fully functional. Okay. You weren't at a... You, you <laughs> <laughs> to a fault. Yes. That's funny. <laughs> he was on the morning show. It was major drama. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Radio. Yeah, what are you going to do? So, you leaving KLBJ, was that a... You know. It was really, it was, yeah, it was I mean, hard. you were there a long time. How long were you at Cable J? Um, five years. Five years, wow. Four or five years, yeah. Okay. So yeah. Was... And I'm still on weekends. Right. But, yeah, it was tough to leave every day. It's strange being able to stay in my pajamas with my dog and <laughs> not have to go into the studio. Yeah, we've been doing that for two years now. Yeah. Yeah. You guys look okay. I mean, you don't look any different. I'm wearing Spanx right now. Devolved into jellyfish in. or anything. <laughs> It's a slow devolution. Um, yeah. Uh-oh. That is a word. I run. I run. I run every day. Every day I run. I ran today. I ran three miles today. 
Do you really? I really do. Three months? Because you, you would talk about that for a while, and I didn't want to bring it up because I don't want to be the guy that's bringing up the thing you, you abandoned. Totally bring that up and, 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 and every day? Every day. In uh, the five, heat? No, five days a week. In the no, heat? no, no, not at all. My the God, the heat? The treadmill with the gym. I've stopped doing the outside once it hit about May. Okay. But I was doing outside for three miles, and now I do the treadmill. Good for you. Every five days a week. I really do. And I, I'm in such pain. I, I hurt all the time. Aww. I don't want to do it anymore. But you got to stretch to balance it out. I do stretch. I, you know what I don't do? I don't stretch after, is what I'm told. It's causing a lot of my pain. Oh, oh yeah. I stretch after. So stretch Why after. don't you? If you know that. I don't know. one of those things because you're like, uh-uh. I ain't doing no, it. No, because they, by the end of it, by the time the I The end bomb's cool with me. I ain't stretching. <laughs> yeah. Every time I hit three miles, I'm like, fuck it. Where's the vodka? Where's the vodka <laughs> right now. I ran three miles. I deserve, I've earned this. Fuck it. Get out of my way. I don't care if it's two o'clock in the I'm afternoon. I'm going to stretch my liver. That counts. <laughs> <laughs> It is time again for another Charlie Hodge Show Live. Don't miss the monologue, plus celebrity guests, and skits with all your favorite characters. <laughs> Mark W. Whataburger guy. Uh, nerd guy too, huh? And don't forget bored head guy and no glippity glop here. So don't be a dick tip. Get your tickets now for Sunday, August 26th, online, capcitycomedy.com, or just give them a call, 467-2333. 4672333 All about vapor.com. Get yourself a vaporizer. Stop smoking. Vaporize. It's better for you. Science says so. And all about vapor.com. They make their own flavors. If you live in the Round Rock area, just stop by the store and you get free samples. The website allaboutvapor.com's got all the info and all the cool products. <laughs> Is jellyfish one of the terms? We'll get back to the mailbag in a second. I'm but is sorry that is that, that one of your uh, uh, Margaritaville terms? Jellyfish. Well, right before we started recording, you're like, oh, there's coconut peats. There's slappy. Oh. <laughs> there's slappy shell faces. <laughs> <laughs> there's the conch cooters. I mean, no. what? <laughs> huh? No, there's um, there's Buffett bands. So bands that want to be Jimmy Buffett call them a okay. Buffett band. And then there's coconut peats from Club Dread. Yeah. Okay. Just dudes that pretend to be Jimmy Buffett but aren't. Okay. Now are jellyfish people that have listened to. Jimmy Buffett for a lot of years and have had too many, you know, fried they lobster <laughs> fritters, and they're like, Whoa. they stop being parrot heads yeah. and slid into jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not a term as of yet. Okay, but, but hey, maybe we'd, you know, we could work on it. Catch some fire there. What's an example of a Buffett band we might have heard of? Um, oh God, have you heard of the Boat Drunks? I don't know. Uh uh-uh. uh I don't think I couldn't name a song that may be a band I've heard of. Probably or, a good or, thing. Or Have you heard of the band Slipped on a Pop Tune? <laughs> <laughs> good one. No, Stepped on a Pop Tune, not Slipped. What did he... S- stepped on a Pop Top. Stepped on a Pop But he, he blew out a flip-flop. Blew flip my flip-flop. Flop. No, Stepped on a Pop Tune. That would be that would be the band. That'd be the one. Yeah. You heard of them? Nope. It's real. It's a okay. real thing. If you say so. You betcha. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Okay. Boat Drunks. Boat Drunks. Well, we've asked you about this before, and you said every once in a while you get to go out, or they send you out to a Jimmy Buffett concert to do interviews and get some on-the-street stuff. Have you been in his presence recently? Yeah, he was here in Austin, and then uh, in Houston. Did you go interview him? Yeah, I got to interview him. What if he grabbed your ass? Ooh. Would there be an HR violation? I mean, who do you go to about that? Has he? Has he just? Uh, He can do what he wants. As far as stature and age, you know, achieved Cactus Prior type. You know, oh. you know what I mean? Where he's it's too like, young yeah. for that. Is he too young for that? I think that? you got to be 70 plus to be able to go, I prior. don't know what I'm doing. My God, that guy was just. Yeah. Well, just, he didn't He didn't do it out of like, what are you going to do? Tell someone no, 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 a not fucking big deal. <laughs> yeah, I'm huge. I got <laughs> restaurants in every port. Yeah. No, he did it like, what? Well, I thought it was cute. I don't know where it is. Mm-hmm. And he'd squeeze their butt. And they're like, oh my goodness. And he's like, are you I'm my old. daughter? I'm 70. And, he'd be like, oh. and then he walks away winking at everybody. And you're like, the new hire just got molested by an old man. And it's hysterical. Cactus never got me. Never got you? No, but my wow. uncle, who's about his, his age, type, got me. What? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Was this at the unlicensed monkey farm? No, 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 no. <laughs> not not as a hey, child. Hey, let's take it to the unlicensed monkey farm I again. I can't believe you remember that. That's awesome. <laughs> not as this a child. This is just the back of a station wagon. <laughs> <laughs> There's no monkeys here. Oh, yeah, Your right. creepy old uncle pulled a cactus on you? Well, well he was kind of cactus-like, you know, kind of... Uh, it was when I it was here as an adult. I just moved here, and he gave me like the welcoming, "Oh, welcome to Austin!" hug, and his hand slid down my back and wow. grabbed, totally like did the grab and squeeze, and I was like, "Uncle Jet, what?" Because it's one thing if you do the brush by, and you're like, "I think you got a uh-uh. little finger pad enjoyment," but the squeeze to stop me, like check the Charmin. Yeah, I haven't hugged him since. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm always like, bye. Yeah. 
He's wow. like, yeah, I'd like another hug, but I don't need one. It's filed right up here. <laughs> ah. At first I go to hugs, and I flip through it right to the K's. That's really creepy. I like how you just flippantly said, oh, well, the cactus never did it to me, but my uncle. <laughs> no. No. Well, I always hear people reference cactus doing that. To, I mean, every girl in the building has a cactus story except yeah. for me. And I, we would all get company-wide emails from Don saying, my yeah. dad's in the building. So cover your ass. Yeah. Literally, cover up your ass. Yeah. Well, what happened um, back to the hypothetical situation, Jimmy Buffett, he... I don't think it's because he, he's, he's still in the, I'm, I'm just so famous that I can kind of do whatever I want. Because really, how could you complain? If it you was know, just like a simple like he butt grab though. in a crowd. You know, I don't, he wouldn't. Yeah, he wouldn't you're right. It. He wouldn't but, do it. But he does, I do, I, I love it when he loses the words to like, like a girl can flash in the crowd and he will forget Margarita though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is just awesome. He could be singing, you know, Pirate Looks at 40. Boobs come out, and it's just like, uh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna. I'm still strumming this guitar. From the no top, boys. Because <laughs> I just like that. Boobs never lose their attraction. Nope. No. Matter, Especially no matter him, what your I mean, age. you think he's seen them all, like, literally. Yeah. Seen every pair. Yeah, you think he'd be like, eh. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm allowed to say that. I think, I think you I are. am. I mean, it's endearing. You could notice that just in the crowd. Sure. Some coconut Pete out there is like, no, -uh. <laughs> how dare you? How dare you say that? All right, back to the mailbag. Yes, back to the mailbag. One um, fan writes: Now that you work for Sirius, do you actually get to visit a satellite? <laughs> I do not actually get to visit a satellite, but when you go to New York, they have all the uh, the satellites uh, a tracker, so you can kind of see them. Track how many satellites are there? Uh, a couple. I don't know. I just looked at it. And went, oh, that's cool. Next. Because I've seen West Star. Uh, I actually know the name of one satellite. That's it. I was That's it. West Star. Anymore, but and yeah. you kind of let the sigh carry out, hoping someone will cut you off. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we've I've seen enough war movies that, like, you only have satellite access when it's passing over that part of the Earth. So there have to be enough that they're constantly passing. You know. Well, there are many that are in geosynchronous orbit, meaning oh. they stay in a fixed position over the United States, so they can be. Accessed. How? Yeah, lots of those. How's it orbiting <laughs> when it what? It's geosynchronous orbit, so it's going at the same speed as the Earth. So it's always staying over North America. That's called geosynchronous orbit. Did I just blow your mind? You just blew both of our minds. Yeah. Really? No, you knew that. Geosynchronous orbit? Yes. Yes. I Many, Most of the high-traffic satellites are geosynchronous. I just right now, all I'm computing <laughs> is that satellites are actually old geosynchronous. Oh, my God. The you unknown guys are car. looking at me like mustards just flying out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> like, Obviously, the? we didn't pay attention in astronomy or well, no, no, I didn't, science I, I, or any of that. I didn't know where I got that. I, it's what? just random knowledge that you I, have. I have so much random knowledge, and it's awful. It's horrible. Because I get looks like the, these Geo all the time. People look at me when I say something, and they're like, what? Why do you know? I'm like, I don't know. Just, But anyway, uh, so she doesn't get to visit a satellite. <laughs> and this is that was my clue. That I could see through your poker face that these might not have been from fans. What? From Charlie Hutton. Because <laughs> oh. I was looking at your Facebook and your I'm like, wait a minute. Your poker face is there full of shit. There were no mailbag questions. My these are all What? You really have me going. Really? I really thought these were from. These are no, from that's, Facebook. That last one stank of Charlie Hutton. I'm looking at Facebook right now. <laughs> He's doing the exaggerated wrist type. <laughs> I thought fans really cared, Charlie. No, it's they do. Mm. See what you've More done, Matt. <laughs> See what you've done. <laughs> I'm sorry. When there's when you lay the shit on that thick, I gotta call you on it. it. wasn't that thick. It was pretty thick. It wasn't like you went to a New York delicatessen and got one of those double stuffed shit sandwiches. <laughs> those are delicious. <laughs> they are good. They are delicious. Overpriced but delicious. <laughs> I did bring in a couple of stories. Okay. From the Dong of America. Ooh. I haven't I done these for a while. A little trip back home. Kirsten is from Florida, specifically Safety Harbor. Niceville. I have one from Niceville. Do you? Yeah, uh -huh. You got a Niceville? It's alarming how much... The, the, think how many towns there are in the United States. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just towns. I mean, there's there's there might be a billion towns. There, there, it's quite possible there could be a billion towns. Yet Niceville <laughs> comes up, like, almost on a weekly basis. Like I, I kind of want to go there because in my mind, it's like Niceville's in Hazard County. You know, if I didn't know that was in Kentucky, I would think it was in Hazard County because yeah. of all the weird... Crazy hillbilly shit that goes on there. Yeah, no, it's astounding the amount of hillbilly, like, Florida trash that live in Niceville. Well, I mean, there must be. I feel like if you get, when your airplane pulls up and it 
docks. <laughs> they open the airplane door and saloon doors swing in and a drunk falls through that has just been punched. <laughs> like, oh, hey, you think you're better than me? And runs back through him. And <laughs> like, an old piano you player. just get off the plane into a saloon <laughs> and there's just gun. Oh, fuck. There's bar room brawls. Yeah. And this is no different. Niceville. This story lives up. Well, this is actually pretty awesome. Out of Niceville, the dong of America, a woman is accused of clocking her boyfriend with a candle and candlestick holder, <laughs> <laughs> resulting in her arrest. The alleged attack took place June 28th at a Powell Drive residence. Niceville police officers were told that a man and his girlfriend became involved in an argument that became physical. No. Yep. In Florida? Yep. And the Niceville PD pull up. I mean... You know, Those often guys. they're like, I thought you guys were supposed to be nice. Stop resisting, <laughs> you fucking drag. Ugh. The woman is said to have picked up a glass candle holder, which had a candle in it, and threw it at the man, hitting him on the head. The woman told lawmen, quote, she got a little drunk and argued with her boyfriend. She did not remember anything after that. The man had a bump on his head where the candle holder struck him. She was charged with battery. Was her the candle date. lit? No, it was not lit. Okay. I don't know if that had anything to do with the overall scuffle. Like, why isn't your camera lit? But, or the candle lit. But it, and it was, oddly enough, it was in the library. And there was a bottle of mustard nearby. Wait a minute. Hold on. No. I that's, call bullshit. I made that up. There's no but library the rest of it's in true. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good stuff. I need another cold beer. Anyone need a beer? Sure. Yeah. Also out of the dong, I just hit pause. Now it's yeah. all unnatural. We got another round of beers. But, you know, I was just thinking we could probably find out the answer to that question. Is there a guy on the Stern Show called High Pitch Mike? Uh, I can Google it. Yeah, that's true. We could also Google it. <laughs> or ask and wait several <laughs> days for someone to write back. To the internet. <clears throat> Matt, do you remember on the um, on Wings it? Wild Web Roundup? A while back, you were playing me video of the guys that did the the zombie attacks in Miami. I believe I remember that, yeah. <clears throat> they acted like they were all diseased, yeah, and they yeah, ran yeah. up, and they were pranking people. That was a great video. It was a great video. Do you remember um, one of the things we talked about when we were watching that was it's alarming that someone has not been severely beaten, or one of these pranksters has not been severely beaten by someone that doesn't fall for the prank? Mm-hmm. It happened. Uh, it happened. In I mean, Florida? Well, yeah. These guys are in Florida. <laughs> and they Miami really thing. they would do, like, authentic zombie makeup. The Miami thing where the guy was chewing the homeless guy's face off? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah, the yeah. headlines were, he's a zombie. Every, all the press went immediately to zombie. And the, these guys did kind of pick on ghetto communities. They would show up to, like, you know, a housing project the at the basketball yeah. court. And that pranksters. And they would be in, like, full-on Hollywood zombie makeup. And they'd approach like a basketball court, and twenty able-bodied young men would run. I mean, just run. Well, out the of title fear. of the video was: it, "This is an example of the only time black guys will run from a white guy." Yeah. And he was walking onto basketball courts, and a bunch of dudes, you know, young, strapping, dragging guys, a foot, you know, like flesh hanging and off they his face, haul ass the other way. Now, admittedly, if somebody came toward you who was bloody, the first thing you're going to do is try to get the hell away from him. Yeah. Know? So it's not a, necessarily a scary thing, but. You should have seen some of the individuals run. They were hilarious. Well, it came back to haunt them because yeah. I just saw this story. And it reads like this. The famous pranksters behind the infamous Miami zombie video apparently messed with the wrong guy in their latest escapade. They tried to prank a Boca Raton man. <laughs> retirement town. Uh, yeah, Boca Raton is money. Mm. Is that where all the retirees go? Oh, yeah. Lots of money there. But uh, he wasn't having it. What? Boca Raton? In Spanish? Really? Yep. Oh. Mm. In Florida, it means wealthy old people. Mm. I was going to say, that is one hell of a competent real estate agent. If you have a bunch of wealthy people move to a place called Rat Mouth. Yeah. (laughs) Welcome to Rat Mouth. I think it's reverse psychology where all the (laughs) shitty people are in Niceville. (laughs) All the wealthy people are in the Rat Mouth. (laughs) Well played, Florida. (laughs) <laughs> well played. Someone never, no one ever told him opposite day wasn't real. <laughs> oh, for God's sakes. That's where you go well, if you want to sell a reverse mortgage. Exactly. 
You know who sells those is Henry Winkler. Yes, I've Fucking seen him. Fond is on there. All those years of trustworthy living. Mm -hmm. Yes. Trust me. <laughs> oh, God. Hope you got paid, Winkler. The prank involved dressing up as a hitman and leaving a dangerous briefcase on the floor in front of whoever they pick out to be their victim. Cops even had to call the bomb squad because the nature of the prank. Well, they went up to this man, and there's video of it, and the oh, guy's yeah. holding his ear, and it, the briefcase is there. He's like, talking to, and the guy's like, it's kind of like the, on the plane, like, let's roll. Mm -hmm. Fuck this, terrorist piss beats the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> now, these are the same comedian video guys that did the zombie prank. They decided, how do you dress like a hitman, first of all? You know, black suit, shades. Okay. You know, you got the thing up to your ear. And pretended to leave a bomb in front of somebody? Yeah, I'm a little sketchy on the details. There is video of it. And I was thinking I could play that. I can't guarantee you it, it's going to make it's sense. It's like a tipping moment. Yeah. yeah. It is. But this is real. Shit's about to get real. Okay. It's not going to help. Okay. So the, the guy in the black suit's walking up to a guy in a parking lot with a briefcase. He's like, is this yours? And he's like, yes, you promised, and now, but it's set to Ave Maria. And the guy tried to run away, and he's now being pursued by said man. He's trying to scare the man away. The man is now saying... <laughs> the guy just goes, you're on camera, it's a prank, and now is, yes, and beating the shit out of him. <laughs> Chasing him down. He's running. Oh, uh, concerned citizen. Awesome. Beat him up. She saw it. Comedy goes awry. Comedy goes awry. Ah, uh, good times. And Speaking great of comedy oldies. going awry, next week, Matt Sadler head headlining the Capital City Comedy Club Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. Good seg. That is true. That's, uh, that's coming up. That's already here. That's upon us. It's upon us. Upon us. Come out and see Matt's hat. Or Do people, the, really the, the, are you expecting someone to say, show me your tattoo? Oh, I hope not. I hope we're past that now. Yeah, me too. Uh, I, I made that, that mistake in the radio biz, and uh, I'll cut over it, and we can move on with me telling jokes that I've written. Oh, uh, your your ass is like just a, a, a cork board of regret. Do you, <laughs> really do you still have to show that tattoo it shows? Really? Um, not very often. I mean, like I did a month on the road. Oh, you know what was weird? I did. I was telling you this, uh, Charlie. I went to Tulsa. I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They introduced me and somebody screamed chicken wing. <gasps> and I was like, what? Whoa. Whoa. It's Tulsa. <laughs> it's the last thing I expected. You know? Then they yelled, with blue cheese. Yeah. You realize someone was just ordering food. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you could escape that name. Yeah, I know. Never. It's, it's a good name. Never. It's a good name. Chicken wing. That's yeah. a good name. It's a, it's a quality name. It's hard to forget. I'll give it that. It's better than cake whist with a twist. I mean, for God's sakes. Yeah. <laughs> what about special K? You don't no. want special in your, no. in your nickname. You no, because people are going to start opening the doors for you, but not like the regular doors. <laughs> when we hit the button and it swings open, like, here, go ahead, Special K. Yeah. I rode the short bus here, guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I did a show with a comedian called himself Special K. And I just, I, that just bothers me when people have, you know, a comedian, mm -hmm. really, oh, I'm Special K, man. I'm Special K. Everybody called me Special K. I'm like, what's your name? He's like, Jeff. All right, let's go with Jeff. Yeah. I'm going to call you Jeff. Regular Jeff. Yeah. You can't just call me Jeff. You got to be something. Regular Jeff. <laughs> And it's, uh, that, that is the downside of a nickname. You need to be well-known with your nickname. Because if you go to a place where, like, introducing yourself as a nickname is no good. <laughs> yeah. No. My name's yeah. Jeff. Everyone calls me Special K, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Kool-Aid. Yeah. I'm Kool-Aid. No, you're not. You're not Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> I, told, I told you about the nickname I tried to start for myself. Whenever somebody tries to give themselves a nickname, it always fails. Oh, early. yeah. Like in seventh grade, I, I decided I was going to be, you know, because I was really short. And I decided I was going to try to use that to my advantage and be cute instead of short. Would you like Nugget? No, I came up with, no, this is, a, that would have been, that would have been, been awesome. That would have been brilliant. <laughs> nugget. <laughs> I wish I'd thought of that. I was not that smart. I came up, uh, you know, like the teacher went around the class going, okay, you know, I want to say your name as it appears in the role. 
and you just you say here and then you if you have a different name you say that and i had this planned out like the night before and i went into class and then she's like okay matthew sadler and i was like uh yeah but th nobody calls me that and she's like okay what do they call you and like the entire class turned around <laughs> and looked at me and i go uh well everybody calls me uh penguin <laughs> I thought that women would think that was adorable because penguins are really cute and like no everybody she, the, even the teacher went I'm just, just going to call you Matthew and I was like oh, yeah that's better that's probably better but like there's one good thing I'm not wearing a tuxedo under my clothes right now were you watching right a lot of Batman or something I don't know what time? I was saying. no 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 not even uh, no like actual penguins I thought I wanted to remind girls of penguins because that's adorable and they would want to put their hands on me in some capacity and, Penguin, yeah. that'll get me laid. It, yeah. it, it never logic? caught on except for one dude. There was one dude that always called me Penguin like the rest <laughs> of our school together. Was Although it the douchey dude with the puka shell necklace? No, he's just, hey, always, trying, he's just always trying to be friendly. They call me Puka. Penguin, what's up, man? I'm like, oh, look, it didn't work. It failed. Let's just forget it. I tried it. Just let it go, man. Nice puka shell choker. <laughs> <laughs> nice puka choker. <laughs> Speaking of, hey, this would be a good time to try the five-minute challenge. It would be. Now, you came in with one prepared in honor of our Well, not our prepared. Esteemed I, it's guest. just something that I was driving over. I thought, oh, this might be kind of fun. Okay. Since Kirsten's here. Uh, speaking of nicknames, uh, Cake Whist with a Twist, which I think is an awesome nickname. Uh, you, you know, uh, Twinkle and Stink? Huh? Uh, Bob's, uh, you know, is that like Jason's Two and the Beaver, One no, to Check Your SNL. Fever? <laughs> I've never heard that. My wife rides these. I used these the other night. You know what? That Say it one. Again? I've never heard that. Two and the Beaver, one to check for fever. Oh my god! <laughs> you know what her best one is? What? Uh, two in the Pink Floyd, one in the Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's really good. <laughs> two in the Ray Pole, one in the Escape Hole. <laughs> <laughs> I write these down. I use those later on Radio Margaritaville. <laughs> Can you do that? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, uh, the SNL sketch with the S ESPN Classic guys. It's Jason mm. Sudeikis and Will Forte. Magisil. Yes, where they do that. Like, here's an example of one. I'm plugged in if you want to hit me. Oh, no, okay. I'm not plugged in. No, I'm plugged in. Quick shout out to our sponsor, the Today Contraceptive Sponge. Put a baby blocker in your lady locker. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> All right. So spring. we're going to be writing slogans? Yes, radio slogans for K-Quest with a twist. Okay. All, All right. right. All right. Okay. Radio oh. slogans for K-Quest with a <laughs> twist. What if we also wrote radio slogans for Jimmy Buffett? I want to hear what you guys would write. Okay. All right. Okay. For Jimmy Buffett as a radio slogan. For Once Jimmy Buffett both. or Margarita Radio, Margarita Radio. Both. All right, how about this? Let's write promos for Cake Wist with the Twist show on Jimmy Buffett Radio. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me get my phone here. Set it for five minutes. Nope. Nope. Sorry. Yeah, I wrote a couple extra seconds. Apparently, I don't have the confidence of the man who busted a gut laughing at his <laughs> own material over I there. I knew I was going to screw myself. I pulled a Joe Parsons. You did. You pulled a Joe. This has happened before that during the five minute challenge, someone has been so pleased with themselves that they start <laughs> laughing. <laughs> I found this one very hard again. Did you it really? was yeah. hard. Well, I think putting the, the Margaritaville top on it made it a little more difficult. I thought the whole. Because we were writing like promotional slogans that you would hear promoting K Quist with a twist yes. on <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> Buffett's radio, right? Yes. I got four. Of them. All right. I got, I got six of them. And wow. the, the one I'm least proud of is the one I giggled at. And so I have to put it last. Yeah. Well, all right. So you're, we're going to build up to that one. How many do you have, Kirsten? I've got like two. Okay, that's fine. I. Now, have you written some you're not proud of? Because you have to read them all. Oh, what? Yeah. No, I've got some like half finished. All right. All right. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's your big idea, Wing. You start us off here. Right. Plus, you got the most of them. That's <laughs> awful. In fact, I'm going to start with an awful one. Hey, you're listening to K-Quist with a twist. By the way, the Loch Ness Monster doesn't really exist. K-Quist with a twist. Uh, <laughs> what does that have to do with Buffett? Not a goddamn thing. <laughs> do they have to rhyme? Nope. But all of mine do. Mm, okay. All right. Now who? Uh, Kirsten, why don't you read one? This is weird. Could I do my own promo voice? Yes. 
Uh, you can change your voice up, though. Like, yeah. K-Quist. <laughs> K-Quist with a twist. On a boat with Buffett, bitches, and on your radio. Radio Margaritaville. I like that one. I like that one. K-Quist with a twist reigns over the Buffett <laughs> like a sneeze guard over the buffet. <laughs> we do a feature called the Buffett Buffet. That's pretty funny. <laughs> How could you not? The two words, they're almost the same. Yeah. And everybody spells his name wrong, and he gets irritated because it has two T's, not one. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. But he does have that would be irritating. shrimp that are kind of cold at all times, like a buffet. Always. All right, let's move on. <laughs> You're listening to K-Quist with a twist, who once tried to pee in a urinal but totally missed. K-Quist with a twist. <laughs> Is that based on a story I've forgotten? Have you ever tried to pee <laughs> no. in a urinal? No. no. <laughs> But what are those, those things that for the women where you can stand up and pee? Oh, I yeah. have thought about purchasing but those. You put them in urinals. That's one of those yeah. things where you use it once because there's no way it works flawlessly. Yeah, That's one of those things. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's like, runoff. No. Yeah. And you're like, I, just, mm. I got 10% of the urine in my pants. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> Charlie and I are dudes, and we pee in urinals, and you always catch them. No. I've, I've always. always thought girls have it good getting mm-hmm. to sit down. Because when you're forced to stand, there is no way. There is no way to stand up and pee without getting urine on your pants. Correct. Really? Whether you're at a I, urinal or a toilet, there's nope. splashback. There's just oh. splashback all the time. Is that I, why some guys sit down? I pee sitting down is any, t- any chance I get. Yeah. Any chance I get, I will pee sitting down. It's so much more sanitary. Uh. I didn't realize that. I yeah. thought you were... Especially t- urinals. I don't know who invented oh, urinals, man. but it's this is the dumbest idea. fucking invention ever. Uh-huh. There is no way. I've peed at every angle into a urinal. <laughs> there is no way mm-hmm. to pee into a urinal without there being some sort of back fleck. Not Bela fleck. Back fleck. No, I will say one of my greatest pleasures in the world <laughs> is peeing into a toilet that's dirty while standing up, peeing into a dirty toilet and cleaning it with your pee stream. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like melting the ice in the trough, mm-hmm. one of those bars that has ice yeah. in the urinal. They're like, oh, this is dirty. I'll take care of your you toilet. You mean like there's, like, poop, there, there's, the there's poop in the well, toilet? There's just there's little things that get and out of the toilet. And you're shooting it up like an asteroid? It's breaking into smaller yep. asteroids? Yep. Yep. It's disgusting. Sorry. We started out cute. <laughs> we got gross. <laughs> All right, Kirsten, give us your other one. I Wait, wait, can I save my good one for last? Yes, yes. You Charlie, can. you go next. All right, okay. here we go. <laughs> Margaritaville. He sings pencil thin mustache and she has one. <laughs> K kiss, K quiz with a twist. <laughs> I was implying that she has an effeminate mustache. Well, but you not, don't, but no one can I, see you right now. That's not flattering at all. I waxed it last night before. I came ah, here. pencil thin mustache. It's pencil thin. It's so small. <laughs> Hey everybody, you're listening to k Quist with a twist, and hey, stop doing that while you're listening, or you'll sprain your wrist! k Quist with a twist. <laughs> Stomping on Coconut Pete with her coconut cleats. k Quist <laughs> with a twist! Uh, oh, where am I? Oh. <laughs> uh, k Quist with a twist, way better than finding out you have a sebaceous cyst. k Quist with a twist. <laughs> Margaritaville plays every half hour, making you want to slit your wrist with cake whiz with a twist. <laughs> Not every half hour. <laughs> God. Cake whiz with a twist. Like being boned in your ears till you can't make a fist. Cake whiz with a twist. What? what? You just thought of things that rhymed with is. Yeah, I know. And just, that's it. I know. <laughs> All right, I think we're ready for your last one, oh, Kirsten. Right. No, Mine. Yeah. <laughs> K Quist with a twist, taking you balls deep on Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I just wanted to use the phrase balls deep on of course, something. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't rhyme, but. Oh, Buffett's one of those guys here that that ain't funny. No, balls I think Balls deep on me? It. Oh, that's happened before. <laughs> Do you have another one, Matt? Yeah, I got the one. I'm out. The right. one that, the one okay, here's giggle. the one that he openly laughed at while oh. riding. Oh. We only had five minutes to do this. It's all not right. like we spent all night, so all right. be proud. Okay. You, you, we better laugh. K Quist with a twist, way funnier than that movie Schindler's List. <laughs> <laughs> K Quist with a twist. <laughs> Good one. Because that movie's not funny at all. Oh, my God. <laughs> Have you seen Gorillas in the Mist? Then I'll- listen to K Quist with a twist. <laughs> oh, I thought of that one, but I couldn't think of it. I love Gorillas in the Mist. It's a great movie. Get off my mountain. Well, I read the book. The movie kind of sucks. Diane Fossey, you scary. 
<laughs> Sigourney oh. Weaver? Is that the one? Yeah, yeah okay. That movie was awful. Yeah, I, I the only book saw was it once. good, though. It's one of those movies I only saw once. Sigourney were you played. Uh, were you 10? No, I was older than 10. I was high school, I think. Huh. Well, that's why it was good. Yeah. What was the. We've, I've asked you this before. Yes. It was about monkeys, but the guy, it was like Tarzan, he, but he goes back home and he's English. Like, return Tarzan. to Grayskull. Greystoke. Greystoke. Okay, the, the name of the movie is Greystoke, The Legend of Tarzan, Lord of the Apes. That's okay. the entire title of that movie. And it's the guy from Highlander, but he returns home and he can imp, you know, imitate Lambert. panthers and or stuff. He's like, oh. Now that he moved to America. Mm. Well. Yeah. I have a vague memory of this movie. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, maybe they showed it on Channel 44 when I was growing up. And the uh -huh. guy that played Bilbo Baggins was his buddy. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. Remember in the movie? Actual Tarzan's buddy? Yeah, his buddy that brings him back to England. Okay. Was Bilbo Baggins? Yeah, the guy that played him in Lord of the Rings. Oh, I don't know that. I can't remember his name, but yeah, that was him. You remember the guy? He's like, uh, he looks at the ring, and he makes that horrible face for just a second, that flies, Rah! <laughs> You have to have seen the movie about 16 times. I, I know what you're talking about. K-Quist with a twist. Well, thanks for sitting in. We appreciate it. Thank that was you. Fun. It was good it's seeing you again. It's always a pleasure. We yeah. miss you. We Hopefully miss I won't get in day. trouble. No, you're not going to get in trouble. Are you kidding trouble? me? <laughs> it's a satellite. They're way up there. We're way down here. No one True. can hear. She's seen the satellites. So she knows. <laughs> I've seen them, yeah. I've, I've ridden them, actually. Yes, in geosynchronous <laughs> orbit. <laughs> ah. I still think that's made up. It's not made up. It's a thing. It's a word. It's a deal. It's a, What is wrong with you? It's one of those rocks you break open and there's crystals all clung around the uh, the inside. You mean a geode? Exactly. <laughs>